Welcome back to explainer.com and the series on the Higher Maths Paper 2 questions uh, from the Leaving Cert 2008 and we're going to go through the solution of question 4 now which is the trigonometrical solution. Okay, part A, there's no diagram, we're just told that A and B are acute angles such that tan A equals 5 over 12 and tan B equals 3 over 4. Find cosine of A minus B as a fraction. The first thing to notice is that we'll have to use the combination angle formulas here, which you need to know by heart. That's because we're given the values for A and B separately in tan form, and we're asked for a cosine value of their combination, a subtraction in this case. So we might as well start by recalling the combination formula for cosine when the angles are subtracted, which is cosine A minus B equals cosine A times cosine B plus sine A times sine B. We'll want to start changing these to tan functions, okay? So we change this equation as follows. We pull out the cos A and cos B from the right-hand side to isolate 1 plus tan A tan B. Now we have the right tans now, but we still have the cosine, uh, a, cosine A and B there. We can introduce the fundamental trigonometrical qu uh, identity, which should be known by all, and that is that the square of cosine A plus the square of sine A is equal to 1. So we can change this and get cosine A in terms of tan A um, there, and that's it as shown. The same ha obviously happens with cosine of B, so we can substitute these two values for cosine into our previous equation. And we do that, so there we get the denominator coming out as um, 1 plus tan squared A and 1 plus tan squared B, uh, the square root of those. Okay. Now we can look for simplifications here, uh, try to make that equation friendlier, or just plug in the values that we have. It so happens that the values are nice, as we'll see, so it's better to substitute now rather than further simplify. So we plug in the values where tan A equals 5 over 12 and tan B equals 3 over 4. On the denominator, obviously, we have to square those. And then we're going to have to add 1 um, to, that, to, those, uh, uh, to the tan A and tan B on the denominator. So we get that equation. Now, don't multiply the two fractions here. Take their square root first, because they behave quite well, because the square root of 169, for example, is 13. So we get the cosine of A minus B equals as shown. And we multiply the denominator there and get 65 over 48. So then it's the product of 63 over 48 times 48 over 65. So we get 63 over 65. And that actually is cosine A minus B as a fraction as requested. So we go into part B now, the first section of it we have to show that the sine of 2a over 1 plus the cosine of 2a is equal to tan a. So there's no sec second angle b in this, uh, in this case, but we get a and 2a appearing here. So we can expect to use the double angle formulas, which are almost the same as the combination angle formulas, where um, the angle a plus b equals 2 times a. So what we can do is state them, state them here for both the sine and the cosine, because we've got sine 2a and cos, uh, cosine 2a here, and then substitute them in and hope that it'll all simplify. So we get sine 2a equals 2 sine a times cos a, and we, get, um, and we know that cos 2a equals cos squared a minus sine squared a. So these come out naturally from the combina combination formulas, as I say. There's no need to know them by heart. So we get that 2 of sine a times cosine a all over 1 plus cosine squared a minus sine squared a is the left-hand expression. And we can convert the 1 in the denominator to cosine squared a plus sine squared a, as we did in part 1. And the sine squareds will cancel, in fact. So we get 2 sine a over, uh, times cos a over 2 cos squared a, and we can cancel the 2 and the cos a there to get sine a over cos a, which is tan a. So that's the end of that part, and we hence, or otherwise, we have to prove that the uh, tan of 22 and a half degrees is equal to the square root of 2 minus 1. As it stands, 22 and a half degrees is a pretty nasty fraction. But the last part dealt with doubling angles, and as you can see, that double this angle is a much more appetizing, because it's 45 degrees. 
Now, 45 degrees is famous because it's where the sine and the cosine equal each other. So it would be nice to get tan A in terms of sine uh, 2A and cosine 2A in this case, which we happen to have done already in part, a, in part 1. So we get tan of 22.5 degrees is equal to sine of 45 degrees all over 1 plus cosine of 45 degrees. We can calculate these values and substitute now. It's best to deal in fractions. So sine of 45 degrees equals the cosine of 45 degrees, which is uh, 1 over the root of 2. So we simplify that and we get 1 over the root of 2 plus 1. This is simple enough, actually, but it's not in the form that's been required, which was uh, the root of 2 minus 1. This can seem a bit bizarre, but you must bear in mind that the root of 2 is a pretty special number. Not as famous as pi, perhaps, but it's really been studied heavily. So how can we get a minus 1 into this expression? Well, think algebra. Think that a squared minus b squared is equal to a minus b in brackets times a plus b in brackets. So let's try multiplying above and below by the square root of, uh, the square root of 2 minus 1. So we, we do that, and we find that the denominator actually turns out to be 1. So that's the way you can get the square root of, mi uh, of 2 minus, minus 1 from the tan of 22 and a half degrees. So we move on to part C now, and we get that triangle there, and we're given certain values, and we have to find SR um, in terms of theta, and hence or otherwise show that tan theta equals 3 times tan alpha. The key to this question is being able to visualize these triangles as right-angled ones, even though they aren't. The fact that some of the sides uh, are equal to 1 in the diagram is almost too convenient. A clear case is the triangle R RSQ there, RSQ, which is clearly isosceles. Let's redraw the figure with the extra deductions regarding its measurements. Okay, there is the figure redrawn. In this version of the diagram, blue lines are drawn to the base of the triangles RSQ and RPS, so that both of them can be visualized as two right, right angle triangles side by side. Theta is the other angle in the triangle RSQ because it's uh, an isosceles triangle, okay, so that's, that's also theta. And because the hypotenuses of both its right angle triangles are 1, okay, here, we already have the answer to part 1. It should be clear that SR is equal twice cosine theta. So for part 2 now, we note that the triangle RPS uh, ang uh, angles must add up to 180 degrees, while PSR here, PSR, is equal to 180 degrees minus theta. The angles in triangle RPS also must add up to 180 degrees, and so we get that beta here, which we've just inserted this special angle, is equal to 180 degrees minus alpha minus, all in brackets, 180 minus theta, and that actually has to equal theta minus alpha. Okay, so there's the diagram repeated. Once again, we have here that PS is equal to 1, and recalling the combination angle formula for sines, when angles are subtracted, uh, and including the 2 cos theta hypotenuse found in part 1, okay, so this here is the hypotenuse to this triangle, we can say that 2 cos theta sine alpha is equal to sine beta, okay, so this angle, or this line here, is equal to the sine of beta and also to um, the hypotenuse times the sine of alpha. So we get that 2 cosine theta equals uh, times sine alpha equals sine of theta minus alpha. Okay, so we can start simplifying there and divide across by cosine theta uh, alpha to get twice cosine theta times tan alpha is equal to sine theta minus cos theta by tan alpha. And we can divide once again by cos theta and we get twice tan alpha equals tan theta minus tan alpha, which leads to the conclusion that the answer, which leads, and the answer must to part 2, is that uh, 3 tan theta equals tan, uh, 
3 tan alpha equals tan theta. And that's the end of the question. Thanks for your attention.